Well, for the third year in a row, the Pacific Ocean is in a La Nina phase. And, and in this week's Weather Extra, meteorologist Darren Peck breaks down what that means for California's atmospheric rivers. In case you hadn't heard, we are in a triple dip. A triple dip La Nina. That's a, kind of a fun way of saying for this third winter in a row, the Pacific Ocean has been in the La Nina phase, which tends to direct the storm track so that most of the really good, impressive storms go just north of California. This is an overgeneralization, but you can see in La Nina, California falls in the area that's not shaded green or purple. The green areas on there are where you typically get more rain than what would be normal or average in a winter. The Pacific Northwest usually gets their share. We have to go back to an important feature of the last six weeks, all of the atmospheric rivers which got pulled our way. And when we look at the globe, atmospheric rivers are a global phenomenon. And this is this week's atmospheric river data. The higher the color on that map, the higher the concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere. And right now, this shows us the next couple of days, there are no atmospheric rivers pointed directly at California for the next week. But we know we had our share, a lot of them, in fact, as we went through the late part of December and into January. And just a quick review, the term gets thrown around so often, it helps to visualize these things. What exactly is an atmospheric river? What's it look like? Here's a great way to see it. There's a strong area of low pressure. That part of the storm we can all recognize, the counterclockwise spin. That area of low pressure was so strong it was able to reach down into the subtropics and pull out this narrow ribbon of high concentrations of water vapor to get wrapped into the center of that storm. That's like a fire hose. It happened to get pointed right at us. Now, this is the one that goes back to last to October 2021. That one was historic, but it's such a beautiful example of what these things look like. That's what it looked like on the radar when it came on shore. There's your fire hose. Now we can see how the whole thing was put together. That's what atmospheric rivers look like. That's a lot of rain. This one shattered records when it came through in October of 2021. And of course, we know we had our share of pretty impressive atmospheric rivers that came through here through the early part of January. In fact, we had nine of them. And here's a representation of that. You can see there are nine arrows on here. Each one of those arrows represents one of those nine atmospheric rivers from late December through the middle of January. Uh, they're oriented to show you the direction they came in. And they're color coded to show you the intensity that they were at. Because remember, we put these things on a scale from one to five. Uh, about a four would be considered strong. Those are the ones that are very impactful and have some hazardous qualities to them. We had five that were at that category in that three-week period as we went through early January. It was a very impressive time frame. I know I'm not telling you anything new. This much we've already covered. But just for a little perspective, that was this January. Last January, when we were in La Nina, like we are this year, but last year, we were right in the heart of a fairly intense La Nina. The conditions in the Pacific were a stronger signal. The sea surface temperatures were colder than average than they are right now. They're both La Ninas, but the one last winter showed a little more intensity to it than what we're seeing now. It's starting to wane now a little bit. And look what happened last winter. That's the depiction of the West Coast. California, for pretty much that whole period, as we take a look at the window of time there for January, February, and March, we had one atmospheric river. That's it for the whole three months. We had nine in three weeks this year. We had one over the whole three-month period, and it was weak. That's the blue one. Look where they all were. Last winter, all the storms fueled by atmospheric rivers went up to the Pacific Northwest, which is what you would expect to happen in a La Nina. They don't always have to go exactly that way. But the best of our understanding of how it redirects the storm track is that's the way it should go. And that's what La Nina looks like. Now, of course, this started to change. It certainly played out that way for us last winter, helped to dig us into the drought because we were seeing a La Nina type pattern. However, over the last few weeks, it broke the trend. And if you look at that pattern, there's your, there's your cooler than average sea surface temperatures along the equator now. That's your telltale signature for La Nina. That was last January. I'm going to switch it to this year. And you'll see it's subtle, but the color is lightened a little bit. We've started to bring La Nina to a close. This triple dip, this third La Nina, is starting to wane. It doesn't show up all that well there. It does here. This goes from the middle of November all the way through late January now. And when we go to the middle of November, right there, look how much bluer the waters are along the equator and how they weakened and lightened, telling us that the strength of the La Nina 
has been weakening over the last five to six to seven weeks. And while it's not a guarantee, it's certainly possible as one of the driving factors for why we finally got back into the storm track here in California. There's a lot more that goes into these teleconnections in the atmosphere. But La Nina is one of the easiest ones to look at if you want to find a fingerprint to give you an idea of what's happening now and what could happen in the long range. And that's what we're going to look at here. If La Nina is starting to weaken now, here's a forecast that shows us what the Pacific Ocean is likely going to do as we approach next fall. Those are the bars over here. So the bar over here shows you where we are now. Deep blue shows you La Nina. High bar shows you high degree of confidence that the Pacific is in the La Nina phase. As we go through the remainder of winter, look how quickly that signature drops off. And this third La Nina comes to an end. That looks like a certainty. So what's going to take its place? You could go neutral but it looks like we're not going to do that. It looks like we're going to go back into the El Nino phase. The higher the bars, by next fall, show you a higher degree of confidence, we're going to go back into El Nino. And El Nino tends to bring those atmospheric rivers back our way. None of these are guarantees, but long-range forecasts and overgeneralizations to give us an idea. How did this winter change? And what maybe can we expect for next winter? If you take a look at the imagery here, the deeper the shade of green on here, shows you a higher concentration of days throughout the winter where you get atmospheric rivers above the normal amount that you would get. That's all this map is telling you, but there's a deep band of green there pointed right at California's latitude, showing you that in an El Nino, you tend to get more atmospheric river days, just more days in the winter where you're susceptible to having atmospheric rivers come in. That's all it says. But considering we're still technically in the drought, and we had three years of La Nina that put us there, it's nice to know we're going to be able to use this map a little more regularly, hopefully, as we get into next winter, to make sure we are continuing to track on that side of the Pacific where the atmospheric rivers might be pointed and how they might impact California's water. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagan will be in next week with another one.